Buenos dias a todas and good morning everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Safari Mac in South America. I'm your guide and your host helping you make connections to the wild. Well ladies and gentlemen, I'm, a I'm sorry to say that we are now starting to near the end of our journey through South America, but I want to leave that up to you near at the end of part two of this special episode. But as always, before we begin, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you haven't done so though, hit the like and subscribe button so that you can stay tuned for updates on special episode announcements or to check out my other videos. Check out my Facebook page where, where you'll find interesting animal facts, updates from conservation projects all over the world, and also if you have questions about anything that you want to send me an email, You'll find my address down in the description below. But today, we're taking a flight once again, so we're not going back up to join the Andean condor, but we're joining a more iconic species of South and even Central America. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the macaws. If we're all set and ready to go, just make sure to not offer them a cracker because they'll go nuts. If we're ready though, let's take flight. Let's talk about their lifestyle, I mean their family and their habitat. So as we know, macaws are part of the parrot family, or Piscididae, but here the macaws are classified as New World parrots, while there are plenty of other parrot species that have been discovered in the Old World. And here I'm talking about Africa and Australia and some parts of Asia. But now, let's talk a little bit more about their ancient past. As far as we know, unfortunately, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done because there's some things that we're not fully sure of just yet. What we think is that the earliest parrot ancestors, which could have been ancestors of other different species of birds, originally started in a pla in Gondwana, which was a, at one time in the prehistoric past, a somewhat of a supercontinent that was comprised of South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, and even the subcontinent of India. But let's talk a little bit about some of, let's go into the world of parrots for a minute and let's meet some of the other parrot buddies that we have. We have from Australia, our famous cockatoo, cockatiels, a much smaller, a much smaller species. The eclectus parrot, which you can tell the green is a male while the reds are females. And then in Africa, there are, of course, the famous lovebirds and African gray parrots. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the world of parrots. Today's episode, though, focuses on the macaws. So, back to our program. Let's talk about their habitat and their lifestyle. Now, apart from the rainforest canopy, these birds can also be found in different woodland areas as well as savanna-like habitats. That's right, it's not always a jungle out there. But let's talk about their role in their habitat. What role do these col colorful birds represent? First of all, as we know, in order for a habitat to be thriving and flourishing, you need to have one thing. You need to have something in both terms of animals and plant. Diversity. The rainforest truly is no exception. So what role do these birds play? As we know, as different animals eat, eat and forage through different plants or rely on different plants for either shelter or a place to have their babies, these macaws, the birds are considered to be gardeners. And no, I don't mean in terms of like using a shovel or rake. As you can see here by these hyacinth macaws, which, are the largest subs which is the largest species, these birds act as gardeners by either spreading seeds all over the place, either through dropping it in different parts from the trees that they eat, or even through their droppings, they can help jumpstart the next growth for the next generation of their homeland of their homelands. Now, some species now it's not, but of course, each macaw has a different role to play, and each macaw has a different lifestyle. So, scarlet macaws, for example, they usually will mate for life. And then we will be, and then they even have been seen sharing food together. So what they do is when it's time for them to lay their eggs, they usually go into a tree cavity where it's completely dark 
and just big enough for them to, for the parents to squeeze through and they usually lay around two to three eggs which then which the females and males will incubate and then three weeks later after they hatch they begin to open their eyes at first mom does most of the feeding but as time passes dad joins in and helps with the feeding as well but unlike some birds where some might take maybe a couple of months while some even as a matter of a few weeks um, to raise the young macaws generally it's believed that macaws are generally help their kids get a head start for at least a year before they're out on their own now let's talk about their diet being now generally these birds can eat some different kinds of insects but one of their preferred diets is fruit and vegetables now of course nothing like this what you see in the picture but think of their homeland habitat through with many different kinds of fruit and vegetables or leaf or leaves or greens there's another kind of thing that's important to their diet nuts in fact it's it's thought that they actually need they actually need to require a higher level of fat than any other bird so this is why they're constantly feeding on different kinds of nut species but now hold on a second you know how there's the whole phrase it's a jungle out there or anything that's not you is trying to get you or eat you or the jungle is trying to eat you <laughs> in a sense if you especially if you don't know what you're doing out there it kind of is you see the different kinds of plants in this habitat all contain different kinds of toxins and tannins that if left unchecked over time will ultimately kill these birds but now it's been all it's been believed that as a result of this, the birds have often go to these clay pit, pits or banks to eat and nibble on the clay, which can help with digestion as well as balance out the toxin levels in the different kinds of vegetation that they eat. However, there are new studies that think that this isn't true or that they say otherwise. In the end, more research and study needs to be done in order to fully be sure. So. You know, South America is one of those big ultimate places that so much needs to be discovered, similar to our oceans. We know we seem to be knowing more about our Earth's moon than we do about everything on our own planet. So more research needs to be done, and ultimately in time we'll be able to get our answers. Hopefully, though some scientists usually end up getting more questions than answers. That's just what shows how wondrous nature really is. Let's talk about their place and their role, or their influence, in human cultures. Now here, I'm not talking about the, you know, being of a polywana cracker. I'm not talking about them being pets. Let's talk about how they really have influenced South American cultures. So, for example, these people, the, Ing the Inga tribe of Putamo, Colombia, actually revered these birds as symbols of grace and ease and he is even said to be the guardian and the protector of the air elements and of the winds carrying prayers to the heaven, heavens while the Boro, Boro, Bororo people of Brazil consider these birds to actually be messengers to the gods but in almost the, in every other culture like the Mayans the Aztecs and even the Incas, they're thought to be representatives of the sun god. In fact, their feathers, which for thousands of years, even before the pre-Columbian times, bird, these birds were actually being farmed for their feathers to be put in headdresses, armor, or other attire for decoration. They even would mimic these birds use, using different materials as a tribute. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all the time I have left for today's episode. But as always, thank you for joining me, and be sure to tune in next week for part two of the macaw, where we'll uncover even some more special secrets. But until next week, get out and explore, find, make your own discoveries, and until next week, this is Safari Mac, and I'll see you all out there in the jungles of South America. Adios!